Welcome back, Platinum Hunters, to another thrilling episode of PTR. As you know, here at PTR, we go over game's trophy list and see what you're in for when going for said game's platinum. Along the way, I'll give you tips and tricks that I've learnt, so strap in, grab your flashlight, and let's dive into the terrific Alan Wake. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! Alan Wake is an action-adventure game developed by Remedy Entertainment and published by Microsoft Studios, released for the Xbox 360 in May 2010, but was remastered and released October 4th, 2021 for both PS4 and PS5. Alan Wake has a whopping 68 trophies. You, uh, you couldn't add just one more trophy there, guys? Which consists of 3 gold, 5 silver, 59 bronze, and of course, 1 platinum trophy. So you have your work cut out for you. Alan Wake has difficulty set trophies, where you have to beat the game on easy, normal, and nightmare. Now technically, you could start off with nightmare and unlock all three trophies once completed, but I highly recommend starting off on easy for the following reasons. Collectibles. There are a lot, and I mean a lot of collectibles in this game. The majority of your time is going to be running around, finding everything, from manuscript pages, to coffee thermos, to points of interest, to cans, to switching on TVs, to switching on... You know, I know, I got it, I got the concept. There is a pretty good guide that can be found on PSN profiles, linked in the description. And go on about knocking that out during easy mode as you'll have much less stress getting through certain areas. Special mention to end off the collectibles part, there are 106 manuscript pages throughout the game. 15 of them can only be obtained in nightmare mode and if you have picked up a collectible and then shortly die before hitting a checkpoint, you will have to pick up that collectible again for it to count. Once you have all collectibles, the following trophies will pop. Like I said, there is a lot of collectibles. Let's continue with miscellaneous and chapter specific trophies. If it flies, it burns. For this trophy, you have to defeat a grand total of 1,000 ravens. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now I can hear the moans through the monitor, but this trophy is not as bad as it seems. The ravens are not a common enemy and are only found in certain chapters, but if you want to grind this out and get it out of the way, the best place would be in chapter 1, where you have to run to the cabin to save your wife. Various flocks of ravens, or unkindness if you want to get technical, will spawn. You defeat the ravens by flashing your light into them, and in this area you can get about 70 kills before they stop spawning. Simply reload the checkpoint and repeat until a thousand ravens have met their demise at your hands. Uh, let's not let Peter find out about this. Alexa, we need guns. When it comes to weapons, in the game there are trophies associated to the amount of kills that you get. To run over this quickly, 100 with the revolver, 50 with the shotgun, rifle and flare gun, and I believe it is 25 with the flashbang. All kills are stackable and if you don't get one of these on your first run, you will definitely get it on the later runs. Energized. You change batteries 100 times. You can hold up to 20 batteries at a time, and while on easy mode, it is quite possible to play a whole level without changing a battery. So before the level ends, just focus your torchlight and burn through those batteries as they do not transfer over to the next chapter. Meet the deadline, the only time limited trophy in the game, which is in the later half of chapter 3. This trophy sees you trying to meet a certain person at Colden Lake. You have 30 minutes to do this, which is more than enough. However, if you are doing your collectible run, forget it, as you will have to go out of your way to get certain items and it is impossible for you to make the deadline. But Use what you've learned when playing this section and come back in chapter select. Highly recommended that you get this on easy. Even on easy, avoid unnecessary fights. In the train yard, use the car, it's to your left when you get to the electrified fence and be careful around the platform areas. While running through the same chapter, towards the lake, you will encounter a possessed train and a little further, a bulldozer. Defeating them both will earn you iron horse and heavy metal. Child of the Elder God Towards the end of chapter 4, 
you will go to the Anderson farm and you will have to fight off the Taken on a concert stage that they have built. The objective here is to not take damage and go critical. Defeating the Taken while keeping your health up will earn you this trophy. There's ammo galore, flares and a high power torch all along the stage to help you accomplish this. Best attempted on easy. An idyllic small town. This trophy can be found in chapter 5 and is quite simple. Make your way across the town without dying. You'll be accompanied by the chef who will be a great help. So stick with her and get that darkness off the enemies so that she can send them to the great light bulb in the sky. You will eventually get to a helicopter get to the where you will have to make a stand while they heat up the motors. Once you have boarded the chopper, the trophy will pop. Once again, best attempted on easy. Gunless Wonder. Now this is a trophy that asks you to tie both hands behind your back and send you on your merry way into the wild. In chapter 6, you have to cross the whole map and get to Colden Lake without firing a single shot. Your flare gun counts as a shot, so sad face. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Basically, the only weapons you will have available when you attempt this will be your torch, flares, and flashbangs. So use them wisely. As stated before, if you are doing the collectible run, going for this is a no-no because of the situations you will be putting yourself into. Instead, learn the layout of the land, where enemy spawns, where you can use cars which will be a big help and plan accordingly. Come back in chapter select and attempt on easy. Trust me on this. Moving over to the missable trophies in the game. The main one to look out for is drink them both up as you are required to perform a certain action twice during the game, but can only do it in chapter 1 and chapter 5. In chapter 1, when you enter the diner, on the right you will see an old gentleman who will ask you to play a certain song on the jukebox. Simply go over and press X to select the song, and then X again to play it. So that's the first part done. In chapter 5, while making your way through the streets, you will see the same diner. Go in, play the song again, and the trophy will unlock. The next two can be obtained in Chapter 4. Medical Opinions After the good doctor leaves you with the Anson brothers, you will need to return to your room to progress to Nightfall. Once there, just continue to progress to Hartman's office once the key is acquired to get you into the staff wing. Upon heading through the double doors from the atrium, take your first left and you will enter a room full of paintings. Ignore them and head to the desk with a computer in front of you. There you will see a tape recorder. Interact with it, play the first tape, Make sure to stay in the room and to start up the next tape after one ends. There are three in total and it should take around three minutes to get through them all. Boob tube. <laughs> when escaping the asylum, you will come across a waiting room with a TV in it. Just interact with said TV and the trophy will pop. Now by the end of your easy run, you should have unlocked around 90% of the trophies. And now you will have to play the dreaded nightmare mode where enemies have more HP and hit harder. If you have planned this right, you will only need to collect the final 15 manuscript pages and beat the game on Nightmare to unlock the Platinum. When I went for this, I was dreading the worst, as one enemy alone can drain your battery just so you can get the darkness off them. However, knowing what you know now, you can plan ahead. Flares, flashbangs and the flare gun are going to be your best friend. Just keep in mind that 9 out of 10 encounters with the Taken, you can just run away. That's where the flares and the flashbangs come in. Ellen unfortunately is no Usain Bolt and can't run very far without rasping for air. Plus, most enemies can outrun you. So when you see a group come for you, draw them in, flashbang or flare gun and book it. When Ellen starts running out of breath and they are still taken behind you, draw a flare and walk it off with the flare in hand. And once it runs out, book it again. As I said before, you want to finish the level as quick as possible, so running from engagements is your best bet. After all this night hiking is done, you should be the proud owner of a 3.2% Platinum. So is Alan Wake worth getting the Platinum for? Well, you're looking at a good 25 to 30 hours depending how you fare in this game. Nothing is too hard, so for difficulty, you're looking at a 3 out of 10. However, it must be repeated that there are a lot of collectibles and that might put some people off. Nonetheless, I found the game to be enjoyable enough that this wasn't an issue. 
There are plenty of oh shit moments and attention when you hear the take in Coming to the Woods will have you on your tippy toes. Alan Wake's Platinum is a solid 7 out of 10 and I think you should give it a try. At the time of writing this, it is only 20 euros and you could probably even find it second hand somewhere for less. Alright Platinum Hunters, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Please maybe press that like button, leave a spooky comment and sub to the channel. Farewell and remember to leave the lights on.